Good morning everyone. Hope everyone is having a good week so far. My goodness, it's been one of those mornings. Um, but I've got some news here of some elders letters. Um, we've gotten a bunch of elders letters and we did a video last night together that I haven't even had a chance to edit yet. Um, but I thought this was a little more important because I want to thank the Australian activism activist group because my goodness the information they're you know sending me thank you thank you now according to my friend Laura 14 articles and news reports have come out in the Australian news media about Jehovah's Witnesses and the redress scheme and they're sending me all this information so you know I will try to put it all in a file and put a link below but I will try to get as many of these out to you guys as possible because this is great because of all of this media attention there are Jehovah's Witnesses waking up even in this country I've gotten some emails of ones in the US who are seeing this and they are disgusted and sickened by what they see and how they see the organization you know acting about this now I want to mention that in a couple of these articles they've mentioned that there are six organizations who have not joined the redress scheme uh, the Kenya one it's not a religious organization but they're claiming they have no abuse problem and it's all false accusations sound familiar but out of those six groups who have not joined the redress scheme, there is only one religious group that has not joined. Guess who that is? This is a PR nightmare for Watchtower. And it ain't over yet, folks. It's not. But I just wanted to read the latest one that just came out today um, from the Australian National Redress Scheme Jehovah's Witnesses hold out over sex abuse. The Jehovah's Witnesses is openly defying the Child Sex Abuse Royal Commission, refusing to implement its recommendations because they go against the religion's Bible-based beliefs, despite allegations that 1,800 children have been abused since 1950. Um, back to the article. I digress. The secretive religion of nearly 70,000 members is one of the six institutions that were publicly shamed and stripped of taxpayer funding by Social Services Minister Ann Rustin, who condemned the groups on Wednesday for failing to uphold their moral obligation to society by signing up to the redress scheme. This is damning. And like we've mentioned before, Watchtower is damned if they signed up and damned if they don't. And, you know, because they're not signing up, look at what this is causing. You want to talk about the reproach on Jehovah? You want to talk about apostate lies? No. This is the government going after Jehovah's Witnesses. This is not the government going after Babylon the Great and all religions. No. This is the government going after an organization that refuses to accept responsibility for their child abuse problem. Oy vey. Sorry, as a mom, this just infuriates me. I mean, these poor kids, you know, kids' lives matter and it, it it devastates them for the rest of their lives back to the article she warned the refusal of the six institutions including the boys brigade new south wales to participate was blocking the compensation claims of 55 abuse survivors the australian can reveal the jehovah's witnesses has failed to reform its structures in line with the directions issued by the royal commission in addition to its rejection of demands it sign up to the government scheme and at compensating victims the decision means those with sex abuse allegations within the religion will still need to have their stories corroborated by at least two witnesses before church elders 
consider whether an alleged offender should be sanctioned by the organization. The Royal Commission into Institutional Responses to Child Sexual Abuse warned there were systemic problems within the Jehovah's Witness religion in dealing with abuse, including a failure to report credible allegations to the police. The Commission heard Jehovah's Witnesses had documentation of abuse allegations by 1,800 children involving more than 1,000 perpetrators since 1950, and three specific recommendations were made. The religion was urged to abandon its application of the two-witness rule in cases involving complaints of child sex abuse, that it allow women to be involved in the investigation processes, and that it no longer require members to shun people who leave the organization if they are a victim of child sex abuse. A Jehovah Witness spokesman said the three recommendations related to the religion's Bible-based beliefs we believe they go well beyond the scope of the Royal Commission's terms of reference, he said. In a second statement, the spokesman said adopting the recommendations was unnecessary because it showed a distinct lack of understanding of the beliefs and practices of Jehovah's Witnesses. Really? A distinct lack of understanding of the beliefs and practices of Jehovah's Witnesses? So does that mean Jehovah's Witnesses condone child abuse? I mean, to me, there is no gray area. It should be black or white. Ugh. The spokesman said two witnesses to an incident of abuse are only required to determine whether an alleged perpetrator remains in the congregation, not whether an allegation is reported to the police. But we know they won't report any to the police. That's what the Australian Royal Commission discovered, that out of all these accusations, clear back to 1950, zero, zero was reported to the police. But the spokesman did confirm the organization shuns people who leave the organization of his own free will. But the commission has consistently failed to acknowledge that individuals who want to leave the organization of Jehovah's Witnesses, no longer be an active member, can do that by conflating um, someone choosing to no longer be an active member and someone specifically disassociating themselves, saying, I just don't agree with the organization anymore, I don't want to be a part of it, are two totally separate things. Uh, and again, with respect, we just make the point well, no, that... That was inherent in what I just put to you, but the consequence of dissociation, as we understand it, is that that person will be shunned, and that means they lose contact with family, friends, and everyone else who remains inside the Jehovah's Witness organisation. Is that right? Again, Your Honour, the your, person... Your, your can... colleague is nodding. Is that yeah, right or not? Well, because you've said disassociated, yeah. uh, Your Honour, but he, he or she can choose to be no longer an active member of the congregation. I understand that, but if they are so um, um, unable to cope with what's happened and the way they've been treated inside the organisation, that they dissociate, then they lose all of their previous social structure. Is that right? That could, that could be the case, and we respect their right to make that decision. Well, it's a pretty cruel way of dealing with someone, isn't it, who has suffered sexual abuse. I could only repeat what I've said, Your Honour. I know that it's cruel, isn't it? To take away, by reason of the rules that you impose, all of their social structure, that's cruel. Wow. But like you saw in the clip, how can someone stay in a congregation when their abuser is going to this congregation also? Not only that, but how can you even face those elders when they have hid a person, you know, a kid coming forward that has been abused? And we've heard hundreds and hundreds of these stories. Other institutions that were named and shamed by the government for not meeting the June 30th deadline were Australian Air League, Fairbridge, Restored Limited, Lakes Entrance, Pony Club, and Kenya Communications. The Australian Air League announced on Wednesday it would join the scheme. 
Senator Rustin said the institutions that had not met the June deadline to join the compensation scheme for victims of institutional child sex abuse would be ineligible for any future Commonwealth funding. Yay. I love this, Senator. The government is also investigating options to revoke tax concessions, including for those who can apply for charitable status. She will discuss further sanctions with the state and territory ministers next week. Australian Air League, Jehovah's Witnesses, and Boys Brigade all have charitable status. The Lakes Entrance Pony Club is on the tax deductible gift registry. It is completely unacceptable that these institutions have failed to meet their moral obligation to join the National Redress Scheme, Senator Rustin said. And when you go back to um, Jeffrey Jackson's testimony, when they asked him if they'd be willing to do that, he says, oh yeah, we'll, we'll you know, consider it. Yeah. These are institutions which know they have been named in applications and yet they have chosen to shirk their responsibility to finally do the right thing by these survivors. More than 220 non-government institutions, including churches, schools, and charities, have signed up to the scheme, with another 156 committing to joining. Nearly 2,700 people have received compensation under this scheme worth a total of $220.9 million. Now I want to mention um, that in one of these articles that uh, Stephen Unthink was interviewed and he was saying that a lot of these abuse survivors are not even bothering to apply because they know Watchtower is not going to accept responsibility and join the scheme. So how many of those survivors are saying, I don't even want to bother and go through all that again, you know, typing out the abuse they suffered. For what? For what? And this is sad because how many other abuse survivors are there that aren't even going to bother to come forward or who won't go to the police just because they know of the difficult and horrendous time that they have to go through with Watchtower and the elders. Judicial committees being shunned by their family just because they can't be part of an organization that condones this. So you can see it's a real difficult um, position to be in. Now there's another article here um, by the Sydney Morning Herald. Morrison threatens charity status of organizations refusing to join abuse redress schemes. Prime Minister Scott Morrison has threatened the charity status and government funding of organizations that refuse to sign up to the child sexual abuse redress scheme by the Tuesday deadline. Um, now there's also a letter that they sent to these organizations that is scathing. I mean, like I said, this is a PR nightmare for Watchtower. Um, new one out yesterday, five groups refu refused to join redress scheme. Um, starts with survivors are continuing their fight against five groups that are refusing to join the National Child Abuse Redress Scheme as the organizations prepare to cop financial penalties. Of course, Jehovah's Witnesses is in that group. Um, and it does say Jehovah's Witnesses said they were continuing to talk with the government. Jehovah's Witnesses have responded and will continue to respond directly to individual claims for redress in a caring, fair, and principled matter. Right. Now I'm going to put the link down below to these two articles. Um, you know, if you want to give them a read, they're interesting. Um, yeah. Jehovah's Witness child abuse survivor Stephen Unthink says many people haven't put applications in. Why go through all the paperwork, all the questions, writing up all your suffering and abuse into a document when you know the religion is never going to assess it? It's just not worth the pain of having to relive all of that. And this is sad. It really is. 
because it's just more attempts to shut up the voice of the survivors. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting um, because a charity founded by Prince Charles, the Prince's Trust, took steps so abuse survivors could seek redress related to the defunct Fairbridge Society, but Fairbridge did not sign up to the scheme by the deadline. Now, we got some elders' letters this morning, some documents. Thank you, Atlantis and Petra, very much because these are documents for the Kingdom Hall Trust and I'm sure everybody's going to be plastering these everywhere but on the Kingdom Hall Trust document um, it's KHT 3.4 and this is the delegated authority pursuant to clauses 31 through 35 of the Articles of Association of the Kingdom Hall Trust this does have a connection I'm just going to read point number one. Clause 31 of the Articles of Association of the Kingdom Hall Trust, the charity, dated November 21st, 2018, provides that the trustees of the charity may delegate any of their powers or functions to such persons by such means to such extent in relation to such congregations as defined in the articles or matters and on such terms and conditions as they think fit. Now the reason I bring this up is because the Kingdom Hall Trust has trustees who are going to sound, it sounds like they're going to be liaisons between Watchtower and each individual congregation, the elders. So that's why I read that one. But when you go over to page 2 under Child Safeguarding, there's points 12 through 15. I'm going to read these. The trustees delegate to the body of elders the function of taking re reasonable steps to safeguard child beneficiaries of the relevant congregation. Whatever that means. I'm sure this legalese, you know, is Watchtower covering their backsides. Number 13, in exercising this function, the body of elders shall adhere strictly to Jehovah's Witnesses' scripturally based position on child protection, as may be from time to time revised, updated, or replaced, as well as any relevant direction or guidance from the Britain branch office of Jehovah's Witnesses. The body of elders of the relevant congregation will provide the trustees with reports on allegations of child abuse which occur at a kingdom hall. So what happened with calling the service department? Point 15. In all relevant circumstances, the trustees will report serious incidents to the relevant charity regulator and or statutory agencies. Wow. I thought that was really interesting. Now also, I'm going to put the link below to JW Leaks because um, this section on Britain, he has documents from the International Bible Association in Britain, the Watchtower Bible Tract Society of Britain, the European Association of Jehovah's Christian Witnesses, and when you scroll down to the bottom, London Kingdom Hall Trust, and he's got all these documents. Now, I sent him the elder, all the elders' letters and documents that I got this morning because a lot of this is documents to these congregations who have given up everything and joined the Kingdom Hall Trust. And, um, <laughs> wow. Yeah, e even here, primary account, the congregation does not operate a bank account. All receipts and payments will be processed through the bank account of the Kingdom Hall Trust. So they just signed over everything. Now, getting back on my soapbox, y'all want to know how awful this world is getting. And there are a lot of good people in it. But this was on our local news this morning. Jeffrey Epstein statue found in downtown Albuquerque. 
Yeah, so while they're, they're pulling down all these statues of all these historical figures, I'm going to put the link down below to this. A statue shows up of Jeffrey Epstein. And for it, those of you who don't know who he is, but I'm sure you have, he was convicted sex offender here in the United States that committed suicide in jail. Yeah. So the statue shows up in downtown Albuquerque, and they had a plaque there, um, which reads in part, he had a home in New Mexico, Zorro Ranch. He was also a rapist who died in prison. It then went on to list several court cases involving Epstein and his victims. So I don't know if someone did this as mocking as all the statues they're taking down or if someone, you know, actually thinks that they can take down all these historical statues and then put something like this up. I mean, this world is just going crazy. It really is. And I don't know what's going to happen, but it's just getting more difficult to you know live and and just to hear about this kind of stuff because I mean this is disturbing it really is and especially when you scroll down and you can see that they have an article where Jeffrey Epstein accuser even says that um, he directed her to you know do our former New Mexico governor Richardson it's like, oy vey, oy vey, oh my goodness, I mean, it just never ends, it never ends. So, I hope you all have a good day, and thank you for watching, and I will try to get links down below to all of this. Bye.